People deluded, I'm back again. As the search for a new sporting director goes on, we've been linked with Lewis Campos, people, who's been at PSG, best known for his work at Lille, and we're still linked with others. You know, we've had the West Ham guy, the sporting one, the guy who's going to leave Sociedad again. We've covered all of this, so after this, go and check out that them videos that I've no doubt done. Um, again, Leon have been relegated or provisionally relegated from Liga owing to whatever, and if they are in financial difficulty, would it make sense to go for Ryan Shirky? We've been linked with Rafina and a bunch of players, people. I know the international break has provided a lot of Arsenal-related talking points, but likewise, there's also just been paper talk. So if I share my screen, let's crack on. I mean, do any of you believe we're signing Rafina now? E Rafina is even looking better than the one that was at Leeds and why Chelsea, Arsenal and ultimately Barcelona wanted to sign him. You know, he's doing great for Barcelona, he's doing great for Brazil, scored a lovely free kick. Apparently, Arsenal are reportedly ready to bid 90 million euros to sign Rafinha from Barcelona. I don't believe it, but to humour you lot, let me know your thoughts. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Now, if Rafinha keeps playing like this, I'm having him. The first question you would ask is, you know, he primarily looks better off the right. Now, you could fight with Bukayo Saka for that spot, but, you know... That's Bakayo Saka's spot. If you've watched him at Barcelona under Hansi Flick and maybe under Xavi, but it's I think it's evidently under Hansi Flick. He's obviously played on the right, he's played on the left. He's also played in a more central area. So good players can always find a way. And to be honest, we need difference makers. In an ideal world, we sign another striker, we sign another versatile attacker. Like, you know, if you have a Saka or a Fina, a Jokerez up front or anything else, is that whatever have you, then we're scoring a lot of goals. But as I've been saying and as I tweeted before I went live now, I mean, or, or making this video, we can have the strikers we want. Honestly, with the way Arsenal are playing at this moment, remove Kai Havertz, put Isaac, Sesko, Ferguson, Jokerez, any other striker that I haven't mentioned that we've been linked with. Yeah, they might get some goals owing to individual brilliance or being slightly more clinical, but do you not feel we'd be having kind of the same conversations around chance creation if they were there? I don't know. Let me know your thoughts. I could be making it all up. Now, getting into the technical director stuff, before we go over what is being said with, with the PSG guy, uh, over the last couple of days, you would have seen Arsenal apparently are considering reverting to a model where the sporting director is primarily or predominantly focused on the men's first team. Um, in Per Mertesacker and Claire Wheatley, they have people in place to oversee the academy and women's team. As we know, Edu was kind of handling everything. Men's, over, indirectly, you know, he was in charge of the academy, the women's side, the youth side, uh, well, I've said academy, me, the men's side and all the other aspects that his job entailed that we didn't know people probably a lot of commercial stuff as well so i wouldn't say it's wrong but most importantly we need the right person if i'm honest now the athletic have done a think piece on arsenal's search for edu's replacement and the criteria for contenders if we try our best to skip through the tosh people we know what a sporting director is or i think we widely understand that people arsenal may not grant such wide ranging responsibilities to a new appointment as we've kind of piggy banking off what we said with murtisaka so there might be a revert as we know the real sociedad director roberto alebi has been linked with us allegedly he's leaving sociedad at the end of the season apparently arsenal are interested and apparently arsenal are just beginning the recruitment process for the successor now that probably ties in with what we've seen over the last week or so that Mikel Arteta and the decision makers at Arsenal are meeting up with the Cronkies, probably to talk about the summer transfer window, to talk about January, probably the sporting director and just the overall direction of the club people. We all know the people that are being put in place to kind of oversee what, you know, what Edu has to do until we get a replacement in so we can kind of skip past a lot of stuff, people. Internally, Mertesack has been linked, as it says here. We know he was a former player and he's got a great affiliation to the club. We all know post Arsene Wenger, we're a very different kind of football club now. We have been linked with Rosicki, as you guys know. I'm not in the know of what rosicki has been doing at Sparta Prague, but some of you, when we've spoken about him, have commented that from what you read and research, he's not had the best of jobs. And yeah, it's romantic having former players and all of this kind of stuff but I think I speak for every Arsenal fan we just want someone that's the right option we want someone that can I would say you know I, I, obviously I do has done a lot of things Arsenal not happy with but I also think he's wherever he's gone about it I know we weren't happy at the sales you know and I'm still not happy with Arsenal sales but uh, Aaron Ramsdale getting off him off the wage book where it didn't look like he would leave Smith Rowe we went for a decent fee uh, Eddie and Ketty went for a decent fee Balogun went for a decent fee I'm not sure if Eddie was here when we sold Joe Willock but if he is fair enough so I think we could do better there 
I think obviously the culture is better at the football club. Testament to Mikel Arteta, Edu, and those around him. Obviously, we we're going to need to sort out contracts in the summer, but we've got better in terms of contracts. We have brought in a lot of players that have helped us. For me, with Edu, though, I just don't feel you've got. I might be an ignorant fan here, but I don't. You don't look like you pull rabbits out the hat, which is almost impossible to ask of someone. You don't look like you got the you know the best phone. I'm no doubt. You know you've got a great phone book. You know all the agents and all of that. But it didn't seem like you pulled a rabbit out the hat, like you had contacts that could really get us somewhere. And again, every transfer is difficult. But where you look at half of the players we signed, again, I'm not criticising it. The main thing I would say with Edu for me is the new deals. But what deal has he really done that you'll sit there and say, you know what, that's Edu's work in the same way it's well known, I believe, Michael Edwards with, with Jurgen Klopp. He want, Jurgen Klopp wanted Brandt, who could have been amazing for Liverpool, you never know. He pushed for Salah. It's fair to say that worked out or the work that David Dean's done at the club or, you know, we're going to get onto Campos, but, you know, Campos' work with Leo and their structure. You don't really have that vibe with Edu. Now, whatever I feel about Edu or you, he seems quite rated in the footballing world. He won an award. Obviously, he's going to lead this multi-club kind of thing with the new Nottingham Forest, well, with the Nottingham Forest manager and all the other clubs. He was wanted by PSG. Yeah, I, I would just like a more experienced one. Um, because I think if uh, Mikel Arteta is going to be here, whether I want him to or you want him to or not, sometimes it feels like Arteta gets his way a bit too much. And I think we need a strong voice there. But I would caveat that by saying, at times, looking at it differently, people, I've always said I feel sorry for Eddie because on one hand, if you're here at the club, you have to share the successes and failures, right? But... And, you know, if you were to look at the structure of the club on paper, Edu's here as a sporting director, Mikel Arteta is there. But we all know... It's more like Arteta is here, Edu's there. Edu just does the bidding. And what I mean by that is, again, I'm not criticising the signing of Raya. Mikel Arteta is paid to see improvements where there is none. Nobody wanted to upgrade on Ramsdale at the time. Big up Raya. But that's what I'm getting at. You know, where you look at this very own publication, The Athletic, which I don't know how, you know, how strong their connection is with the club, but it does feel like the club kind of filter things through via The Athletic. Where you look at David Raya, Calafuri, um, it seemed like Kai Havertz, it seemed like it wasn't unanimously agreed that that was the guy. Mikel Arteta pushed for it and he got his way. So on one hand, if Edu's voice isn't strong enough and Arteta gets his way, can I really get him if, you know, you don't want to sign Kai Havertz, for example. It's been made clear that we're signing him. You're just getting it done. I'm not too sure. You know, 100 million for Declan Rice. I'm not knocking the signing, but... You're paying 100 million for a player it can't be that hard. Kai Havertz, Chelsea probably, you know, wouldn't wouldn't leave che wouldn't leave Arsenal alone when they said they're spending 65 million on Kai. So I I do wonder, isolate to Edu. And again, if I worked at the club, I might be able to say something different. But I don't. What is Edu's legacy specifically? If Mikel Arteta walks, and if Arteta is just the guy that steadied the ship and got us to this platform for a next guy to come in, fair enough. That's you. What is Edu's really? I'm not sure really. And I think Edu. I do think people are harsh. I don't think you can be to blame. I'm not against the signing of Mikel Moreno or, or Calafuri, but you look at the summer that we came into this new season off the back of two Premier League fights for the title, it, you can't really say the squad's better. You can't really say, you know, we, we had a great summer to think we can really get over the line and capitalise on those fine margins, which, again, everybody has to share that. But let me know your thoughts, people. Apparently, Arsenal are prepared to look domestically and internationally in the search for the right man, right man, which is fair enough, people. Uh, apparently, candidates within the Premier League inc include Phil Giles, forgive me, whose data-led recruitment at Brentford is held in high regards. That's fair enough. I mean, it'd be in it'd be interesting to see what's, what's going on there, people, if I'm honest with you. Richard Hughes has been someone that could be a good choice. Dan Ashworth, apparently, who worked with Richard Garlick, even though he isn't Dan Ashworth at Man United, and it seems like he hasn't done the best of stuff there. Obviously, we've been, been linked with Olabe people. Um, Andrea Berta's future at Atletico Madrid appears somewhat uncertain, while Briello Vasquez of Osasuna, fifth, Osasuna, fifth in La Liga, has won plaudits for his part in transformation. We've gone over this already, people. We've been linked with Simon Roos before, and we've also been linked with the Monaco guy. So, naturally, there's going to be a lot of lists. I do think it's an attractive job. Who we get is another thing. Moving on and speaking about Luis Campos, apparently he's been approached by Arsenal to take over from Edu. We know we're doing this search thing. Apparently, PSG and their chairman have told Campos Campos, they want to extend his deal. There have been discussions over the conditions for some time now, but both parties are yet to come to an agreement. This has led Arsenal to explore Arsenal's, sorry, Campos's availability following Edu's registration. Now, I don't knock that because, again, mainly his Leo work with the Rafa Leals. I'm sure Osman was there. I'm actually sure Gabriel Magalhaes was there. Them kind of things there. 
if we're not going to sign household names, the Yokoreses, the Izaks, all these guys, can we find these smart players that can improve us? And again, you look at his contact book and experience and the clubs he's worked at and the process he's been part of, there's a wealth of experience. You know, I always, as I was saying before I started waffling, whether Arteta is going to stay here or not, or you better yet, you believe he's going to be here or not, unless we fall out of the top four in a complete capitulation, he's going to be here. He signed a new deal before a ball was kicked, right? I'm not comparing Mikel Arteta to Arsene Wenger, but if we assume, you know, Arsene Wenger had David Dean, David Dean used to save him from his madness. And beyond the obvious, there's a correlation at this football club with obviously stocks being sold and shares being sold. Darren, uh, Darren, D, um, Darren Dean, David Dean, I don't know why I call him Darren Dean, um, but David Dean leaving and obviously us, you know, Arsene Wenger himself being the only footballing man on the board. So I would like a more experienced man, a stronger character, an experienced man. But kind of what I was just saying with Edu, I do think the Cronkies would have to give that guy the backing, really, really, really and truly. Like, I'm not saying getting rid of a Bamian was the right or wrong one, but we've all seen the all or nothing where Edu didn't really want to do that. Arteta pushed for it. Clearly, Arteta made the bird call to the Cronkies. Edu, you, your job is simply to dot I's and cross T's. Whether you've done that well enough is another thing, people. Now, I would love Campos, but... I always say when it comes to players and we're linked with players and you hear they're trying to extend their, their current club are trying to extend their contract, I start looking at it with a degree of pessimism. So is it a case of creative journalism? Is there legitimacy in this? I don't know, people, but I'd be all for that. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, he done his thing at Monaco. He done his thing at Lille. Two title winning sides. He's now still in, 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 in France, sorry, with PSG. I'm all for it, man. Campos would, would be lit, really, and truly, people, if I'm honest with you. I'm, I'm all for that. He turned 60 in September, so you can't imagine he'll be here for 10 plus years where you look at uh, Edu, he's in, his, he's in his 40s, right? But the experience, it's overstated, but it's over. I think experience in life is overrated, but it can't be overstated. I say that all the time. So if there was legitimacy in this, get it done, man. Uh, we've been told it would take 50 million to sign the Nigerian Adamola Lukmanu. I don't know him, but he's living a movie, isn't it? You know, my man almost didn't become a professional footballer, went Charlton, obviously played at a couple of Premier League clubs, has played in Germany, won the Europa League at Atalanta, Ballon d'Or nominee, obviously has played for his country, Nigeria, at the highest level. And I like him. He got, he comes down as homegrown. He's versatile. He's great. There, I, there's a lot of stuff I like about Lukman. I've done a video on him before. Um, they won't sell him in January unless someone pays 50 million. Apparently, they've been trying to get him to sign a new deal, people. Um, he's still contracted until 2029. If we could get it done, I'm all for that, man. He's a baller, but yeah. Uh, Zelinski of Inter Milan said we tried to sign him in the summer, people. He said clubs like Liverpool, Arsenal and Atletico Madrid were interested in me. I also received specific requests from Barcelona. However, I said I love Italy. When I arrived at Napoli, I immediately felt very comfortable. And for this reason, it would have been difficult for me to move to England. So, again, we'll never know if that's true or the level of, you know, interest from Arsenal in the 30-year-old. But <clears throat> I would have went for him. I would have loved him. He's a good, he's a baller. I think I speak for everyone where I say we're bored of hearing about Zubamendi. You know, if you're a great player, if we sign you, great. But, you know, it don't seem like you're keen to sign for us anyways, people. And I'm sure if you support Liverpool United by Munich, you would have seen the same. He said, there's always going to be rumours. And now that January is approaching, there'll be two. But I don't waste energy on outside noise. I'm happy with the way I'm handling it and I'm going to handle it. Fair enough. Do, you, do your thing, man. The article really oversold that. Delivered bad news. I need to learn how to do that kind of stuff. Uh, KK of Napoli. I cannot say his name, but apparently he's slowly but surely inching towards a contract extension. He is still being linked to Georgian International and Napoli winger with Arsenal, Barcelona and Paris Saint-Germain. Uh, PSG bidded 200 million euros was allegedly in the summer that is crazy people we'll have to see but he'd be a baller for us Kivio is still being linked with a move away people and apparently all eight all roads po point to the exit in january he's someone that is going to struggle for first team football maybe not necessarily now because you look at it don't know how fit zinni is uh timber played 65 minutes for for holland but with benjamin white's injury especially as we approach the festive period you're relying a lot on califuri and timber really and they both had issues with injuries I would say the one thing I'm excited beyond the obvious and obviously not happy Ben White's injured is that Califuri is a natural left footer. Timber's a natural right footer. So I'm keen to see what that looks like as a indirectly as a pairing, left and right back. Obviously, how that ties into the back five and now how that ties into the team moving forward because I would like to see what Timber and Saka could do down that right-hand side. And Califuri, Martinelli's form has not turned the corner, let's not lie. But 
it seems like Martinelli enjoys playing with Calafuri and you throw a Mikel Moreno there or a next guy in there and you solve the midfield issue that I believe is prevalent in this Arsenal team, we might start to get somewhere, people. Leroy Sane is still linked with both Arsenal and Manchester United as his contract stuff kind of rumbles on. I don't know to, if we should take stock in that. We're still linked with Mohamed Kudus. Apparently, West Ham are expected to stand firm on his 85 million release clause and they're bracing themselves for offers next summer. A host of Premier League teams hold a concrete interest with Arsenal and Liverpool believed to be among the sides. He'd be a great long-term replacement for Salah and he would be welcome at Arsenal. We've gone over Mr. Rafinha, people. We're still in the race to sign Frankfurt's Omar Mamush, allegedly. Some reports say we're not. Some say we are. I don't know how much stock you want to take in that, people. We're still linked with Jokerez. This journalist has offered his own thoughts on Jokerez and said, but from what I know, Jokerez is not very keen on taking that club Man United because he has all the top clubs in Europe watching him. So I think Jokerez would be happier over in a different place. I'm not sure if Arsenal. I think it would probably be a bit strange after spending so many years in England after playing in three different British clubs, Brighton, Swansea and Coventry. That'd be strange if English clubs, the richest English clubs, would now come to sign Jokerez when he's 27. He'll be 27 in the summer for 100 million euros or something close to that. From what I know, there's a gentleman's agreement between... Spartan, do they mean sporting? And the player to release him around 80 million euros, 67 million, 70 to 80 million euros. But that would be strange how the English clubs would sign a player like that. And he was available for 24 million euros a year ago. They didn't do it, which is true. There is some stock to take in that. But, uh, you know, P P Premier League clubs, in my opinion, are quite lazy where it comes to emerging talents. And he does make a great point about spending so long in England. He's now played in Portugal. Obviously, he's Swedish. You would want to try other leagues, but at the same time, I'm not being funny, bro. Arsenal is still a massive club. It's still exciting to be part of the Premier League and the project generally under Mikel Arteta. If you don't fancy, you can take Kai Havertz's spot. No disrespect to Kai. There's issues there. There's also the London aspect. Manchester United haven't been the Manchester United of my early part of my life in my 29 years. It's still Manchester United. They can still offer you both teams really big contracts. You've now got the added carrot away from any plus points around Man United. You've got a manager in Amarin that you know. Big up Manchester United's players. I don't, I'm not trying to disrespect them. I like Hojlin. I like Zerski. But again, similar to what I just said with Kai Havertz, if you don't believe you can take their spot, there's something wrong with you personally, people. Moving away from that, what's this, people? Uh, Arsenal, Liverpool and Tottenham eyeing 25 million midfielder liking to Jabi Alonso. Big claim, big, big, big claim over Javi Guerrero. We've been linked with this 21-year-old Valencia player before. I can't imagine that's going to go away. And we do need a midfielder. We've also been linked with a man who isn't, isn't Spanish, but does also play in Spain, people. Um, He's been linked as the young Swedish mid, you know, young Swedish Frank Lampard, allegedly, people. Williot Swedberg, can't say I've watched him like that, people. But if he really is like Frank Lampard, then he's technically sweet and proficient and being 20 years of age. And if City, Liverpool, Atletico, Inter, Sociedad, Real Betis, Roma, Villarreal, also looking at you as well as Newcastle and Arsenal, there must be something about you. We can't take too much stocks in being linked because... Scouts could be watching other players. Scouts could be coaching for the sake of it. You know, just because you're scouting doesn't mean there's an immediate move. But if he does have the minerals, why not? FM Wonder Kid, Alberto Mole Molero, everyone signs this 21-year-old in FM, I believe, is also drawing interest from Villarreal, Roma, Batiste, Sociedad, Inter, Atletico, as well as Arsenal. So everybody's saying the same names and Newcastle. So... Read into that what you will. Van Persie has quashed any prospect of a return to Arsenal as a coach, people. As he said, the feelings are still raw. Arsenal apparently are considering increasing the capacity of the Emirates to 80,000, which, I mean, more seats on bums, more money, more opportunities for the fans to go and watch the games. And more money, in it, really? Especially with, what, next year would be the second year in a row we're going to be back in the Champions League. So, well, I assume we're going to finish in the top three. Um this is just a bit of humour, people. But Vlahovic said, a player like me with my build, honestly, I can't run that much. Obviously, Mikel Arteta could have changed what he wants. But when we was linked with Vlahovic, I can't imagine he's changed too much. If he can't put in that defensive shift, why were we going for him initially? And does this say, it's fair to say that when we're linked with these strikers, one we can kind of rule out is Vlahovic. Because if I was Mikel Arteta and the guy said that, boy, you know, you look at Kai Havertz, Jesus, anyone that's played up front for this club, you have to put a bloody shift in really and truly. So I don't know what to read of that. Jokeres can't stop scoring people. Five goals and three assists in five games in the Nations League. On top of that, 28 goals and seven assists in 23 games for the club and country. His stock is rising and rising and rising. As I said, people, Leona in issues. Um, they're in a bit of trouble. Should we go for Ryan? 
in Turkey who could have left in the summer and might leave in January. You know, he's primarily linked to Liverpool, be a good signing for them. Their president said, we lost 15 million euros from his sale last summer, but his value now is way higher. He should stay in January, but it's up to Ryan. He decides what he wants to do. If there's an opportunity to get that done, I'm all for that. Apparently, we're still linked to Jonathan David, who could be a free agent. People ask Bayern Munich, Manchester United, Chelsea. Actually, Spurs have been thrown into the ring as well. I don't know whether you should take too much stock in that, but you look at the free agents on paper, whether they leave or not. Alfonso Davies, Jonathan David, uh, Trent Alexander-Arnold, Mohamed Salah, Virgil van Dijk. There's a couple of players, Thomas Partey, where Arsenal's concerned. Uh, there's a couple of decent, you know, what, Sane, Coleman and Gnabry. I could be wrong on, on all of those, but there's some good free agents on paper, you know, really. So we'll have to see what the summer is saying. We'll have to see what January is saying. we have to see what Arsenal is saying when we get back into Premier League action against Nottingham Forest, who are flying in the league table at the moment. And I think Nuno Espirito Santo and Chris Wood won manager and player of the month in the Premier League, forgive me if I'm wrong. So yeah, let me know your thoughts on Arsenal raising the capacity, the transfer business, our search for the technical director or better yet, sporting director. Don't forget to turn your notification bells on. Most importantly, people, appreciative of you lot making it to the end. Stay safe, stay blessed. Like, comment, subscribe, journey to 70k. Peace. <laughs>